at the Johns Hopkins Biocontainment Unit in Baltimore, Maryland, attention to detail is everything. Airflow between different rooms is carefully monitored, and color-coded doors ensure medical professionals are wearing the right protective gear for a specific area. Set up in 2015 in response to the Ebola outbreak, it's designed for emergency patients with highly contagious diseases. So one of the most um, straightforward masks is what we call a surgical mask. Dr. Lisa Maragakis showed us how N95 respirators and other special gear keep the hospital's highly trained teams safe. You have to get the right size and type and make sure that there's no leakage of air around the respirator. So it's really forcing all the air through rather than these masks which would let the air flow around. Wearing a mask if you have a cold or to filter out pollution is common in cities in Asia. As fears over coronavirus mount, demand for these masks is now spiking all over the world. Experts say there's no evidence, though, that simple surgical masks can protect you from contracting COVID-19. As far as wearing surgical masks when you're out and about in the public, we, we just really don't have any data to suggest that that is effective, particularly for something uh, like COVID-19 that's thought to be transmitted by the airborne route. This month, the World Health Organization warned of a global shortage of PPE, or personal protective equipment. This situation has been exacerbated by widespread inappropriate use of PPE outside patient care. As a result, there are now depleted stockpiles and backlogs of four uh, to six months. And as the battle to contain coronavirus continues, the WHO says health workers and not the general public should be first in line for scarce protective gear. Giles Gibson, CGTN, Washington.